Hello everyone, uh, I'm Vikraman. Almost all our lives in this room depends on making predictions, whether we make predictions on spam detection, uh, stock prediction, toxic uh, language, as my previous speak, uh, speaker spoke about, and so on. What if I tell you there's one critical area where our prediction could save millions of lives? And that, my friends, is predicting earthquakes. Are earthquakes even uh, possible to predict? Predicting the Earth Unpredictable. This is actually a title of a book written by a top seismologist. As the book title suggests, predicting the earthquakes is very difficult and almost impossible. One of the biggest reasons is it's not the uh, question of whether an earthquake will occur or not. Some This is a similar scenario that we most frequently uh, encounter in machine learning these days. Rather, it's the question of when it will occur. As soon as I say the uh, time into this, so we may, the first thing that triggers our mind is LSTM models and other time sequence models. But uh, it is not that easy. Over the past four decades, there have been several failed predictions. Uh, but since 2012, we made tremendous progress in the area of deep learning. Now, how can we leverage the power of deep learning to understand and predict this complex phenomenon? Thankfully, nature communicates with us in several ways before a big event occurs. For instance, in case of a tsunami, the water recedes from the shore before the tsunami occurs. Animals can sense the ground motions well in advance, and they start panicking and behave in an erratic way, uh, hinting that something a uh, big earthquake is about to happen. Likewise, there's one underappreciated earthquake precursor called the force shocks. Force shocks are an individual or a sequence of events that occur before the main event, also known as the main shock. They have a time frame between somewhere around two hours to 30 days before the main shock. Unfortunately, scientists have deemed that these four shocks are indistinguishable from the main shock and the aftershock, and that they are currently identified only after the entire sequence is completed. I mean, but what's the use? Nature is trying to communicate with us, hinting that some big event is about to occur, and we are not able, we don't have the right tools to uh, capture that useful information. And uh, this is where deep learning comes into play. As you can see the highlighted text, the indistinguishable data, uh, we have indistinguishable data, the force shock, main shock, and the aftershock. And deep learning can help us project them to higher dimensional space where they can be actually separable. This is the framework which I used to make this prediction. So uh, I have a time series data, which is nothing but the seismic waveform. And uh, uh, in order to extract useful information, I converted this time series waveform data into a spectrogram, and I created a deep neural network which takes this as an input data. What the deep learning uh, model does is outputs whether this particular spectrogram before belongs to a force shock, main shock, or an aftershock. And uh, due to uh, limited time, I'm not going into the details of the model, but I'll give you a quick preview of my test results. and. Uh, so about uh, 19 out of 24 shocks were predicted correctly. And uh, even though the number looks small, actually I did patchwise training. So the actual test set is super large. And these 20 are the individual number of the four shock, main shock, and aftershock events. And uh, I would like to emphasize why identifying four shocks could be really useful. Uh, back in 2011, there was a powerful earth uh, earthquake of magnitude 9.0 that uh, uh, triggered a tsunami in the Tokyo prefecture. This tsunami attacked the power supply of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. And as a result, the coolants weren't able to perform. And uh, there was a, eventually, there was a radioactive leakage. However, two days prior to this mammoth earthquake, there was a powerful force shock of magnitude 7.3. Back then, had we identified that this event was a force shock, we could have alerted the authorities that a bigger event is likely to occur in a very short time frame, and uh, we could have prevented the radioactive leakage and uh, saved a lot of lives. 
Before I conclude, uh, almost everyone should be aware that uh, there's a big earthquake uh, pending in the California region. The last, <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is not a breaking news. Like, <laughs> if you be to the Bay Area, like, you can see a lot of uh, stuff going on there. And uh, the, the thing is, uh, the last major earthquake was in 1906, and then there's a lot of stress accumulation. And uh, uh, almost all the top seismologists, all the scientists agree that the magnitude will be somewhere between eight and nine, which is super huge. <laughs> yeah, not kidding. <laughs> like, you can check it up. But uh, the, thi uh, the thing is, I, it's not my wish either. It's just a stress accumulation. So with that much amount of stress being accumulated, and it is, uh, and uh, with the, this much big progress in deep learning, so we can actually, uh, by using the methods that I proposed today, we can uh, uh, actually predict these uh, big events well in advance in a shorter time frame and save a lot of lives. In addition, uh, there have been publications in Nature and other publications confirming that almost all the big earthquakes are preceded by a force shock, which is actually a good news. So <laughs> if we identify the force shocks, uh, in my method, uh, in real time, we can uh, foresee the big earthquakes. So, and thank you. <laughs>